This is the first in a series of video guides to some of the world's shorebirds and covers the Calidris sandpipers and related species. The video depicts a range of plumages to aid in identification and has been filmed in Europe, North America and Hong Kong. The Calidris sandpipers are generally long distance migrants and therefore have a high potential for vagrancy. Combined with the similarity between individual species, they present a real challenge to birdwatchers around the world. Video is still evolving as an identification tool, but offers a great opportunity to both beginners and experts alike to develop and fine-tune identification skills. Watch on at the end of this video for details of other forthcoming releases in the Video Guides for Birdwatchers series. The Great Knot is the largest of the Calidris sandpipers. In breeding plumage, the underparts are heavily spotted black, which may form a solid black breastband. The scapulars and mantle feathers are also black tipped, producing a rather monochrome appearance when fresh. But as the tips wear, a bright chestnut base to the scapulars is revealed. In non-breeding plumage, not depicted here, the upper parts are uniformly grey and the breast finely streaked, although some black spotting on the underparts is normally retained. From their northeast Siberian breeding grounds, they migrate to Australasia and Southeast Asia as far west as the Indian subcontinent. Vagrants have been recorded in Arabia, Morocco and Europe. Like the red knot, large flocks may be encountered at favoured wintering sites, but are generally only found in small numbers on passage. This mixed flock also includes greater sand plover, broad-billed and curlew sandpipers. Juveniles have dark mantle and scapular feathers with neat pale fringes giving the upper parts a scaly appearance. The breast and flanks are spotted dark brown, normally with a buffish wash across the breast. In breeding plumage, the red underparts of the red knot are highly distinctive and shared only with the curlew sandpiper, from which it differs in both larger size and its shorter straight bill. During the spring, birds may be encountered in a variety of plumages, from complete non-breeding, like any red on the underparts, through a variety of transitional stages, such as this individual before full breeding plumage is acquired. Widely distributed as a breeding species across northern Canada and central and eastern Siberia, four separate races have been described, which winter in Australasia, Africa, Western Europe and southern North America to South America, especially Argentina. In non-breeding plumage, it's rather plain looking, with grey upper parts and white underparts, with grey streaks across the upper breast and on the flanks. Juveniles have neat pale fringes to the scapulars and wind coverts, with fine blackish subterminal marks. In breeding plumage, the sandling has rufous head, neck, and upper breast, with black mantle and scapulars which show increasing amounts of rufous as they wear. This combination is rather similar to red neck stint, with which confusion has been known. However, the sandling is considerably larger and is the only calidrid to lack a hind toe. The molt to non-breeding plumages commence as early as mid-July on the breeding grounds. By August, there may be little summer plumage remaining 
and birds may be encountered in complete non-breeding plumage from the end of the month. The sandling is perhaps best known for its energetic feeding behaviour along the shoreline in winter. Breeding across much of the Holarctic region, in winter the sandling may be found on tidal beaches on both coasts of the Americas and Africa, western and southern Europe, across southern Asia to Australasia, but is generally rare inland. The pale grey non-breeding plumage contrasts with the dark lesser wing coverts, producing a distinctive shoulder patch when visible. Juveniles may be distinguished by their neat black chequered upper parts. Note also the size comparison here with ruddy turnstone and juvenile semi-palmated sandpiper in the foreground. The semi-palmated sandpiper is one of three small North American sandpipers known collectively as peeps. The separation of these three from each other and from the very similar old world stints presents a real challenge to bird watchers. In breeding plumage the upper parts are rather dull. The dark centred mantle and scapulars have yellow brown fringes and a faint mantle V may be apparent, particularly when viewing a bird head on. The breast is heavily streaked, forming a well-defined pectoral band. The bill is generally rather short, although there is considerable variation, with the easternmost population, to which this group probably belongs, having the longest bills. It has a characteristic blunt-tipped profile, though again this is most obvious on shorter-billed birds. By late summer the plumage is very worn and this may produce a rather scaly appearance to the upper parts but there is considerable variation as can be seen in this small group. Breeding in northern Canada, from Alaska to Baffin Island and Labrador, the semi-palmated sandpiper winters in coastal South America. Migrants make direct flights or use coastal routes down the eastern United States. Malt to non-breeding plumage normally takes place in the winter quarters, so this plumage is rare in the United States. This individual is identified on the basis of its short-legged, stocky-bodied appearance and rather short bill but it shows more flank streaking than is probably typical. Juveniles may be encountered on migration from mid-July onwards, often in mixed flocks as seen here, with least, western and white rump sandpipers. In fresh juvenile plumage, the feathers of the upper parts and crown have rupus or yellowish fringes. Typical juveniles have a rather greyish cast to the plumage lacking the rufous tones of the old world stints. Mantle and scapula Vs, when present, are indistinct. 
The chuntering calls can be heard in the background here. A close view reveals the neat, dark, arrowhead-shaped centres to the lower scapulas, although these tend to be less symmetrical than in juvenile western sandpiper. As the name suggests, the semi-palmated sandpiper has partially webbed toes, a feature shared only with the western amongst the calidrids. The webbing is not easily seen, however, and may be obscured by mud. This adult and juvenile are joined by a juvenile western sandpiper. In direct comparison, the shorter legs and stockier, bull-headed appearance of the semi-palmated is evident, as is the obviously shorter bill on this individual. The western sandpiper structurally recalls a miniature dunlin. In breeding plumage, it has rufous on the crown and ear coverts and at the base of the lower scapulas. The upper breast is extensively marked with dark chevrons which extend down the flanks. The amount of streaking on the underparts is variable but may be extensive. In pre-breeding plumage, confusion with semi-palmated sandpiper is much more likely. Note the longer, thinner bill of western sandpiper, which droops slightly towards the tip. In warm summer plumage, the adult, in the foreground, has generally more uniform upper parts than the equivalent plumage in semi-palmated sandpiper. Breeding in West Alaska and adjacent northeast Siberia, they winter in California and from New Jersey to South America. The molt to non-breeding plumage in both adults and juveniles is often started in August typically a month or so earlier than in the semi-palmated sandpiper. Separation from other small calidrids in winter relies heavily on structural differences such as bill length and shape, leg length and the general jizz. Short-billed individuals are particularly difficult. Classic juveniles are relatively straightforward, given reasonable views. In fresh juvenile plumage, the upper scapulas are fringed bright rufous, contrasting with the greyer lower scapulas and wing coverts. Compare the arrowhead subterminal marks on the lower scapulas with those of juvenile semi-palmated sandpiper. This individual has replaced some upper scapulars with plain grey non-breeding feathers. Note the Dunlin-like calls of Western, which may be a further distinction. The difficulty of separating some Westerns from semi-palmated sandpiper should not be underestimated. Here the semi-palmated is in the foreground. Note its dark crown and ear coverts. Two more juvenile semi-palmated sandpipers join the group.
Breeding across northern Siberia and in small numbers in northern Europe, the little stint winters chiefly in sub-Saharan Africa, east to the Indian subcontinent, where it overlaps with the winter range of the similar red-necked stint. A familiar migrant across much of Europe in both spring and autumn, it is a vagrant to North America and Southeast Asia. In breeding plumage, it is distinguished from the redneck stint by its prominent mantle V and rufous fringes to the wing coverts and tertials. Structurally, it is longer legged and less pot bellied and generally has a longer, finer tipped bill. Although the cheeks and upper breast are generally rufous orange, the chin and throat are always whitish and the breast is less heavily streaked. Unlike the semi-palmated and western sandpipers, both little and redneck stins have unwebbed toes. In non-breeding plumage, the greyish mantle and scapula feathers have broad dark centres which become progressively more uniform and brown through feather wear. In this plumage, it could be confused with the temic stint but the latter always has yellow legs and a much more uniform appearance. Juveniles appear on migration from mid-August onwards and may be encountered in small flocks. Note the apparent structural differences in this group resulting from the arrangement of the contour feathers. The small size of the little stint is readily judged against the curlew sandpiper in the background and the dunlin in the immediate foreground. In close-up, the prominent mantle and scapula Vs are usually obvious. The crown's dark centre is accentuated by whitish lateral crown stripes, which produce a split supercilium effect. The scapulars have solid blackish centres with neat pale fringes which, apart from those whitish fringe feathers forming the mantle and scapula Vs, are fringe rufous like the wing coverts and tertials. In breeding plumage the redneck stint has the whole face, throat and upper breast brick red. During the spring, birds may be encountered in a wide variety of plumages. This individual in fresh plumage has yet to lose the pale fringes to the throat which conceal the red neck. The eastern counterpart of the little stint, it breeds across eastern Siberia into western Alaska, wintering in Southeast Asia and Australia. It is a vagrant to Europe, Central and Southern Africa and North America. In breeding and juvenile plumages, it lacks the pronounced mantle and scapula Vs of the little stins, whilst the black-centred mantle and scapulas produce a rather chequered pattern on the upper parts in adults. Structurally, the redneck stint is shorter-legged, producing a pot-bellied appearance, but it is also longer winged than little stint, giving it an attenuated rear end. The rounded crown and thick neck produce a somewhat bull-headed appearance, similar to semi-palmated sandpiper. In non-breeding plumage, it is probably indistinguishable from little stint on current knowledge. Putting theory into practice is not always straightforward and the identification of a lone individual, particularly outside the normal breeding range, should always be approached with caution. This is true of all members of the genus. This individual, filmed in early August in Britain, was controversial and generally thought to be a little stint in warm breeding plumage. 
However, the blackish upper parts, faint mantle V, heavily streaked upper breast and short legged appearance are all indicative of red necked. Note also the thickness of the bill in profile. The first of three small pale-legged sandpipers, the Temixtint breeds in Arctic and subarctic zones from northern Europe continuously across northern Russia, wintering around the Mediterranean, south to equatorial Africa and east to the Indian subcontinent and southeast Asia. It is a vagrant to North America, East Africa, Borneo and the Philippines. Listen for the diagnostic call as this individual flies and note also the white outer tail feathers. In breeding plumage, the upper parts are a mixture of black-centred, rufous-fringed feathers and plain grey ones. The overall appearance in all plumages is of that of a diminutive common sandpiper. In non-breeding plumage, the upper parts are uniform greyish-brown, with buffish sides to the breast. Juvenile plumage, which is not shown here, is similar to the non-breeding adult, but with neat dark subterminal fringes to the upper parts, producing a scaly appearance. The long toad stint breeds in forest zones of eastern Russia, wintering from Southeast Asia to Eastern India, with small numbers reaching Australia and the Middle East. Vagrants have been recorded in Europe, North America and East Africa. The Asian counterpart of the least sandpiper, the long-toed stint is larger and longer-legged, often adopting an upright stance with the long neck stretched, unlike the typical hunch position of the least sandpiper. In breeding plumage, the long-toed stint has broad rufous edges to the scapulars and tertials and a prominent mantle V. The pale neck and dark crown produced a capped effect, which is more pronounced than in least. The long toes, which may be an adaption to aid in walking on floating vegetation, give it a rather crake-like gait. This individual is with temic stints, with which it shares the common feature of yellow legs, and a single common sandpiper. Juvenile plumage, which is not shown, is similar to the breeding adult, but with more prominent mantle and scapular Vs and supercilium. In non-breeding plumage, the upper parts are dull grey-brown, but with blackish centred scapulars, contrasting with the mantle. The head pattern is similar to that in breeding plumage with a split supercilium, normally obvious and much more pronounced than in least sandpiper. Marginally the smallest wader in the world, the least sandpiper breeds across North America from Alaska to Newfoundland wintering from northern Carolina to central South America and has been recorded in Japan and several times in Europe. Like the previous two species, it has yellow legs, although this may not be immediately apparent. This individual is just acquiring the dark centred mantle and scapulars of breeding plumage. By August, the adult's plumage has worn to a uniform dark brown. This is replaced during the early autumn by the dull grey-brown non-breeding plumage. In close-up, the dark feather centres with diffuse pale fringes can be distinguished. The longish toes are clearly visible here. The middle toe is approximately equal to the bill length, 
whereas in long toed stint, the middle toe is always obviously longer than the bill. Long toed also has a longer hind toe. In fresh juvenile plumage, the feathers of the upper parts are dark centred with bright rusty brown fringes. A white mantle V may be obvious, with further indistinct pale lines formed by white outer fringes to the rows of lower scapulars. This individual has a distinct pectoral band and a dark forehead. In all plumages, Lee Sandpiper has an old dark bill whereas the base of the lower mandible is pale on long toed. Note the size comparison with this juvenile semi-palmated sandpiper. The white rump sandpiper has very long wings which extend well beyond the tail and show well here. This gives it an elongated appearance when feeding, a feature which is shared only with the bed sandpiper. It is actually the upper tail which is white, not the rump, and this may be visible on feeding birds. It breeds on coastal tundras across northern Canada, wintering on mud flats and wetlands in South America. In autumn, migration follows a great circle route down the West Atlantic, with the return passage through central North America. It is recorded more frequently in Europe than in California, and has also reached South Africa, New Zealand and Australia. In breeding plumage, it has a distinct white supercilium, dark upper parts with neat pale fringes, which may form an indistinct V on the mantle. The breast is heavily streaked, producing a distinct pectoral band, and the flanks may be marked with dark chevrons. The malt to non-breeding plumage occurs early, and individuals may be in virtually complete non-breeding plumage by late August. At this time, many birds will show a mixture of worn blackish breeding plumage and fresh grey-brown non-breeding. Note the distinct broad white supercilium. These two birds give the weak flight call as they depart. In non-breeding plumage, the head and upper parts are dull grey-brown, with neat dark shaft streaks. Juveniles are late migrants, occurring on the east coast of North America from late September. When fresh, they are striking with chestnut crown and fringes to the upper scapulars, and prominent white mantle and scapular Vs. Baird sandpiper shares the short-legged, long-winged features of white rump sandpiper, but has a dark upper tail and rather plain upper parts in all plumages.
It breeds in upland tundra areas of the Arctic, from eastern Siberia to northwest Greenland. Migrating during July and August via the North American prairies and North Andes to wintering grounds extending from South Ecuador to Patagonia. It has been recorded in Europe, South and East Africa, the Falkland and Galapagos Islands, Hawaii, Japan, New Zealand and Tasmania. The upper parts of this individual, filmed in the late summer, are a mixture of worn blackish breeding plumage and fresh greyish non-breeding. Its size is between that of the stints and dunlin, and the fine-tipped blackish bill has a slight droop towards the tip, and is somewhat longer than normal in this bird. In juvenile plumage the upper parts have a neat scaly appearance, and the breast is streaked brown over a buffish wash, often forming a distinct pectoral band. The supercilium is less distinct than in the adult. Although generally thought of as a North American species, the breeding range of the pectoral sandpiper extends eastward from the Tamiya Peninsula in northern Siberia across northern Alaska and Canada. The Siberian population are believed to join those from North America, migrating to South America following a great circle route over the West Atlantic. It is the commonest North American species in Western Europe and small numbers regularly reach Australia. Its name derives from the heavily streaked breast, which is sharply demarcated from the white belly in all plumages. Midway between Dunlin and Red Knot in size, it is a large robust calidrid, which is most likely to be confused with the sharp-tailed sandpiper. However, there is considerable size variation, and the identification of smaller females can cause problems. In breeding plumage, the mantle, scapulars and tertials are all blackish-brown, with buff fringes. Although the flanks show a small amount of streaking, the belly lacks the distinct chevrons of the sharp-tailed sandpiper in equivalent plumage. In warm breeding plumage, the appearance is tattier. This individual can be identified as a male, retaining the blacker feathers of the pectoral band. In non-breeding plumage, which is not generally encountered in the Northern Hemisphere, the plumage pattern is retained, but is considerably duller. Juveniles are similar to adults in breeding plumage, but are generally brighter with a more distinct whitish mantle and scapular Vs, and a more prominent supercilium. They share the adult's distinct pectoral band. Juvenile sharp tail is more rufous, with a distinct rusty crown producing a capped effect, and the pectoral band is replaced by an orangey wash across the breast, with a narrow gorget of fine streaks. The calls can just be heard as this group fly off. The North Siberian breeding range of the sharp-tailed sandpiper is entirely enclosed within that of the pectoral sandpiper. It winters mainly in Australia, also New Guinea and other West Pacific coasts south to New Zealand, and is a vagrant to North America, India, Sri Lanka and Western Europe. Similar in size and overall structures of the pectoral sandpiper, these two species are easiest to separate in breeding plumage, when the sharp-tailed has an orangey-buff breastband, heavily streaked brown, which become bold chevrons on the lower breast and flanks, quite unlike the clean-cut breastband of the pectoral sandpiper. The chestnut crown produces a distinct capped effect, which is enhanced by the bold supercilium. Confusion with purple sandpiper, wood sandpiper, 
and buff-breasted sandpiper has occurred in the past, so care should be exercised when faced with a possible vagrant. Non-breeding plumage, not shown here, is similar but generally duller and greyer, with whiter, more finely streaked underparts. The juvenile also has a bright rufous crown, contrasting with a creamy white supercilium, producing a similar capped effect to the adult. The upper breast is strongly washed orangey buff and marked with fine dark streaks. This dumpy, short-legged sandpiper is found almost exclusively along rocky coastlines of the North Atlantic. Breeding on Canadian Arctic islands, Greenland, Spitsbergen, Norway and northern Russia, occasionally as far south as Scotland. The southern limits of wintering birds are northern Carolina and northern Portugal, with occasional records as far south as Texas and Morocco. It is generally rare inland. Molting adults generally takes place close to the breeding grounds, and breeding plumage may therefore be unfamiliar to many bird watchers. When fresh, the dark centred mantle and scapulars are fringed chestnut, but these have been lost on these worn adults, leaving very blackish upper parts. Usually found in small flocks in the winter, sometimes with other species such as the ruddy turnstone. At this time of the year the upper parts are uniformly dark grey. A purple cast of the mantle and scapulars gives the species its name. The breast is also grey, with grey streaks extending down the flanks. Juveniles, not shown here, have chestnut fringes to the crown mantle and scapulars when fresh, and a more distinctly streaked breast. As it searches for small mollusks on exposed rocky shores, the purple sandpiper is generally quite approachable. Closely allied to the purple sandpiper of the North Atlantic, the rock sandpiper is its Pacific counterpart. Four races occur across the restricted breeding range, extending from West Alaska to the Kuril Islands north of Japan. It winters South Japan and Northern California. This individual is of the most distinctive nominate race found on the Pribilof Islands. Other races and winter plumages are very similar to purple sandpiper and may not always be reliably separated. One of the most widely distributed and consequently familiar waders of the Northern Hemisphere, the Dunlin has a circumpolar breeding distribution. Less migratory than many other calidrids, it is rarely recorded south of the equator. The breeding plumage is highly distinctive, with diagnostic black belly patch and rufous upper parts. Six separate races have been described, which differ in size, bill length and colour of the upper parts. This individual is of the smaller, shorter build race Shinzii. In warm breeding plumage, the colour is lost from the upper parts and the black belly patch is much reduced. From July onwards, post breeding flocks may be encountered in Europe as birds commence the molt to non-breeding plumage. In North America, however, birds rarely appear on either coast prior to mid-September. In non-breeding plumage, the upper parts are plain grey-brown and the underparts white with grey streaks across the upper breast. 
In this plumage, confusion is possible with the smaller western sandpiper, the broad-billed sandpiper, which has a distinctive head pattern, and the curlew sandpiper, particularly with the larger, long-billed North American race of the Dunlin, such as this individual. Juveniles appear on passage in Europe from mid-July onwards, but generally not until September in North America. The juvenile has distinct blackish scapulars with neat pale fringes and black spotted underbelly and flanks, which may resemble a worn adult's. The dark mantle and scapulars are gradually replaced by plain grey feathers as birds molt to non-breeding plumage. In breeding plumage, the curlew sandpiper, with its brick red underparts and checkered upper parts, is unlikely to be confused. Slightly larger than the Dunlin, its longer legs, bill, and neck give it a more elegant posture at all times. From breeding grounds in Arctic Siberia, it migrates to Africa, the Indian subcontinent, and Australasia. It is regularly recorded in North America, and vagrants have reached South America. The molt to non-breeding plumage commences in July and most birds encountered in the autumn show few remnants of breeding plumage. Non-breeding birds have plain grey upper parts and whitish underparts with a pronounced white supercilium. Juveniles also have a prominent white supercilium and dark centred mantle and scapulars with neat pale fringes. The upper breast is washed pale orange with the rest of the underparts silky white. Compare the structure with the Dunlin in the foreground and note the white rump just visible as this individual lands. The extraordinary spatulate bill and great rarity of the spoon-billed sandpiper combine to produce what is probably the most charismatic of all the world's shorebirds. The breeding grounds are on lowland tundra in extreme northeastern Siberia, where the population has perhaps optimistically been estimated at two to three thousand pairs. The winter range is still poorly known, but is likely to be along the shores of the Bay of Bengal, where a flock of 257 individuals was found in Bangladesh in 1989. The spoon-billed sandpiper is regularly seen on migration in Hong Kong in April, and Japan in September. Vagrants have occurred on the Western Aleutians, West Alaska and Vancouver in Canada. This individual, largely in non-breeding plumage, is just acquiring some dark scapulars. Breeding plumage is very similar to that of the redneck stint. This second individual is still in plain grey non-breeding plumage. Juveniles are similar to juvenile sandling in the pattern of the upper parts. Although seen here feeding by probing, a sweeping action moving the bill from side to side is also employed. The spatulate bill is probably an adaption to filter invertebrates from soft mud.
Notice how the bill's shape may be lost in profile. The spoonbill sandpiper at the back of this group of redneck stints shows how a lone bird could be overlooked. But note the distinctive, almost bumbling feeding action. Two races of broad-billed sandpiper can be distinguished. Nominate falcinellus, which breeds in Scandinavia and western Russia, wintering in East Africa, and Siberica, shown here, of central and eastern Russia, which winters in Southeast Asia and Australia. Vagrants have been recorded on the Aleutians, New Zealand, Iceland, Morocco, West and South Africa. And it is regularly recorded in small numbers in most European countries. In all plumages, it has a double supercilium which joins at the forehead and a long, slightly decurved bill which is flattened horizontally. In breeding plumage, the upper parts are very dark with more rufous tones in the race Siberica. Winter plumage is uniformly dull grey. This juvenile shows the double supercilium quite clearly. The upper parts are dark brown with rufous fringes and prominent pale mantle and scapula Vs. This calidrid light wader breeds in North America from northeast Alaska to northern Canada, wintering mainly in central South America. The main migration route is through interior Canada and the United States from mid-July onwards. However, small numbers remain in Florida and along the shores of the Gulf Coast. It is a vagrant to Japan, Australia and Europe. This group of molting adults contains a single bird with diagnostic barred underparts of breeding plumage. When fresh, the upper parts are blackish with rufous crown and ear coverts. The post-breeding molt commences in early July and is generally complete by early September. In non-breeding plumage, it could be confused with the Palearctic curlew sandpiper with which it shares a white rump but differs markedly in its longer, paler legs and straight-based bill. It is usually seen feeding belly deep in inland waters and coastal pools, rarely on coastal beaches and mudflats. The feeding action is dowitcher-like, with a rapid sewing machine action. This group are seen with two Dunlin. Juveniles may be encountered on migration from mid-August onwards, when the post-juvenile molt has already commenced. This individual in late August has already replaced most of the dark juvenile mantle and scapulars. However, the pale fringed juvenile wing coverts are clearly visible, as is the white rump. The least aquatic of this group of shorebirds, the buff breasted sandpiper breeds on open, dry tundra of North Alaska and northern Canada, migrating south either through the central United States or via the eastern seaboard and west Atlantic, arriving on wintering grounds in southern South America from mid-September onwards. Despite its comparative rarity on the North Atlantic coast of North America, it is one of the most numerous of the Nearctic waders in Europe, with no less than 60 in Britain and Ireland in 1975. Vagrants have also reached North and South Africa, Sri Lanka, Japan, Hawaii and other Central Pacific Islands. All the birds depicted are juveniles with blackish centred mantle and scapulars with narrow pale fringes producing a scaly appearance. Adults have longer scapulars with broader pale fringes. There is little difference between breeding and non-breeding plumages. 
it is most likely to be confused with female ruff, but is always much smaller and has a shorter, straighter bill and brighter yellow legs. Outside the breeding season, its habitat preference is for short grass plains such as airfields and golf courses, or the drier, baked mud areas around inland lakes and rivers. It is often very confiding, allowing close approach. The ruff is remarkable, not only for the distinctive and highly variable breeding plumage of the male, but also for the extent of the size difference between the sexes. It is widely distributed across northern Europe, Russia and Asia, wintering principally in sub-Saharan Africa, but also in Western Europe and around the Indian subcontinent. The unique ear tufts and long neck feathers forming the ruff may be a variety of colours from white to black, rufous, chestnut, plain, spotted or barred. The distinctive ruff is soon lost however, with the molt commencing from early June, producing a confusingly ragged appearance. Females, or reeves as they are known, also have a distinctive breeding plumage with heavily blackish barred upper and underparts. They are considerably smaller than the males. Non-breeding plumage is rather plain and grey, but with the dark feather centres to the upper parts. Note the characteristic hunched stance. Juveniles have a plain face and dark crown with an indistinct buff supercilium, enhancing a capped effect. The mantle and scapulars are blackish centred with neat pale fringes, producing a scaly appearance. A mantle V is often present. The breast and belly are distinctly buff palest on the underbelly. Watch on for details of other forthcoming releases in the Video Guides for Birdwatchers series. Following a similar format to Calidris sandpipers, this identification guide to the world's Tringa sandpipers covers all the North American, European and Asian species in a wide range of plumages and includes a number of other related or potential confusion species. Specially filmed over a number of seasons in Europe, North Africa, Hong Kong and on the Atlantic and Pacific coasts of North America, this is a unique guide to a challenging group of shorebirds. An identification guide to European and North American sterner terns has been specially filmed to include most of the plumages encountered in the Northern Hemisphere with flight sequences to allow for critical examination of structural and plumage differences. The film also includes a number of other related species found in the region, 
such as the black and brown noddies. A visitor's guide to central and southern Florida supplements the existing travel guides with the detailed sequences of both the birds and the habitat and films a typical route for a two-week vacation from Merritt Island on the Atlantic coast with its winter waterfowl. It's birds of prey Some easily seen visitors. And some which may not be so easily seen. South to the Florida Keys and Dry Tortugas. Where the occasional rarity may be found. and is the home of frigate birds and a tropical tern colony with lots of good birding in between including most of the Florida specialities. This film is for anyone planning a trip to Florida but many of the sequences will also be useful for identification purposes. Details of release dates and availability will appear in the bird watching press.